Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to talk about something the Army needs to start doing. Be right back with you. Welcome back, everybody, and um, it's nighttime. <laughs> yeah, oh man. By the way, Happy New Year. Hope you had a Merry Christmas. And welcome back to the channel. This January the 2nd, 2023. Wow, we made it this far. Hopefully, we keep going. <laughs> anyway, again, I hope you all had a, a great time with your families and, and got to spend a lot of time with them. Um, today, I heard a really interesting um podcast or video it was a conversation that really brought up a whole lot of feelings in my brain and some angst i'm not very much angst you know uh, but just just some 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 thought about this subject and basically what it was was an englishman who had gone to the Ukraine to fight in the war in the very early days, and he and he fought there. It's very interesting because he was dressed in his Ukrainian uniform uh, with his Ukrainian flag and um, um, for this video. Now, I haven't watched the entire series. I think it's three parts to it, but I watched the very first part. And when they talk about basically how a lot of the guys that were there, and this is another completely different video, a lot of guys there claimed to be something and they weren't, or were something, and realized that they um, they couldn't handle going back to a war, or really got on with it. Um, he said even that a lot of the guys who um, who's been to war, who've never been to the military actually did quite well because they didn't really know what to expect, so they sort of stayed flexible, as we used to say when I was in the army: "Stay Gumby, damn it, stay Gumby." Anyway. Um, you know, one thing he talked about, which is, I remember, um, you know, from 1986, pictures there, you can't really see it now, is when I went to basic training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Now, I was an instrument in the Army, and uh, um, amongst other things. Well, um, one thing that we did not do very much um, in our training, our basic training, was field craft. Of course, we went out there, we did patrolling, we did battle drills, we did ambushes, we did uh, reaction to ambushes, we did raids, we did fire, shooting, you know, maneuvering, all this kind of stuff. But when it came time to bivouacking, I remember back in 1986, we were given a shelter half um, we had a, a medium rucksack. Uh, we took our, uh, one of our blankets with us and on top of it, along with, um, I think they gave us an MRE. We had, uh, we had, uh, you know, only, we had two canteens. We had one on our, on our belt and one inside the rucksack. And I think we took extra socks, extra underwear, extra uniform, extra t-shirts, a towel, our shave kit, our shoe shining kit. And um, we had a uh, the foam mattress rolled up inside the shelter half with um, the shelter half with the tent stakes inside. I think we got, um, I want to think we got one, two, three, four. I think we got four tent stakes and um, these bright orange tent stakes. And then um, we had the shelter cord and this was all wrapped up a special way and it was sitting on top of the rucksack in the back and we marched the 13 mile 12 mile 13 miles i don't know how far it was out to it and we put we should we set up our pup tents in line in the sandy south carolina soil um and later on when i went to fort benning into the sandy north carolinian soil <laughs> or the red red dirt of north carolina although i don't i mean we we I don't believe we set up pup tents when I was in infantry school. I think we just slowly, sort of slept out in it, and uh, um, and because uh, um, we uh, we dug trench trenches, this kind of stuff. But we, I, I don't remember sleeping. I don't remember sleeping. 
<laughs> so, but I do remember basic training um, in 86 and basically we slept on the mats uh, inside the tent um, and uh, um, we had our weapon in there with us and you basically wrapped yourself inside that weapon because the drill sergeant was running around trying to steal weapons from people and um, you got your guard duty in, you know, and uh, um, you woke up early, had breakfast with, which was, uh, um, you know, I remember eating sea rations. We had gotten sea rations this was before, right before the brown MRE had came out, had come out originally um, that we had gotten, and we had sea rations. I still have my very first um, um, P thirty eight um, can opener. I still have it on my keychain. I've had it for many, many years since eighty six, <laughs> but. Um, what I don't remember ever doing is any kind of field craft, okay, when it comes to basically how to live out in the field. And one of the points that I bring this up is because, you know, we're used as a big army being logistically supported uh, in every facet, you know, when it comes to dry socks, when it comes to, um, you know, uh, being replenished with water, when it comes to uh, your rations, um and uh, you carry heavy rucks because, especially the infantry, uh, in the lighter infantry, I was a, I was a paratrooper, this kind of stuff also, and, and uh, um, I served in airborne units. And, and so you tend to carry this, you know, a lot of heavy weight on your back in your 65 pound, your 62 liter rucksack. And that thing would get heavy because you didn't only carry very basic amount of personal stuff, you know. Um, and and they, although they gave us lists, um, and and we got out there, and, and a lot of guys would augment their food with with, with uh, pogey bait, like ramen or candy bars or, or whatever. Um, and we would carry, I'd carry a little Esbit stove with me with fuel tabs that either I bought myself or got from the Army. And we would heat up our, you know, I didn't drink coffee, but you'd boil your water up in it and, 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 and heat uh, and. Um, even when we had the self-heating stove, uh, um, folding envelopes you could stick it in, uh, we would still quite often, uh, we would still make ramen and pour water up and eat it, that, you know, eat it that way. So, or we just eat cold, you know, ate cold a whole lot during the Gulf War 91, basically just ate rat MREs and, uh, this was still the old brown ones and you just ate it cold, you know, so, but what that we did not learn and I, it's something I grew up learning because I was a Boy Scout and I grew up on a, on a big farm out in the woods, this kind of stuff. I learned how to live off the land. And um, what he was referring to in this video is how, because um, the Ukrainian, especially the Ukrainian legionnaires, which are the, you know, international uh, forces that are there for, from different countries all over the world, um, a lot of these guys did not really have that that skill craft that 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 field craft uh they didn't know how to build fires they didn't know how to uh um um to boil up water they didn't know how to uh, make fire they did not know how to basically build proper overhead shelter or or uh, all these skills that they sort of i mean we built we learned how to put 18 inches over us and 18 inches uh, in a, a hasty fighting position but nowadays, what you're seeing over there, especially with the, the drones, because the Russians are getting their butts kicked because they're just basically, you know, living in these trenches and um, sitting around and they're getting grenaded, you know, by, by drones. But, um, but what I'm referring to is the, are the field craft, the stuff that they, that they carry on them uh, to basically to cook and eat and, 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 and this kind of stuff. I mean water filters i mean these guys i mean i mean we used to have uh we used to have um um you know uh water you know water purification tablets when i was in the army we used those i remember being out at camp mccall one time and uh we were on um doing some training out there and i remember we were out and you know there's a little small lake out there uh on, on mccall we were filling up our canteens and somebody didn't really somebody didn't filter the water going into his canteen didn't do a pre-filter like you know, put a t-shirt or some cloth over it when he was dipping the water at or scooping the water out with your cup and then pouring it in, making sure you didn't get anything. And so he had a mouthful of, um, I think it was tadpoles and they were dead because he'd already thrown his, his tad, his, uh, he threw his, um, water purification tablets in there already. So that killed them all. But, uh, um, it's just, you know, knowing these kind of field craft skills, how to build fire, how to 
do it the safe way, how to, uh, you know, how to cook, how to keep yourself properly clean, I would say, in the field. A lot of guys don't know how to do that, you know, and you see guys, just, you know, who have no idea how to clean their asses in the field. Um, and, of course, if there's less water around, you find some other way of doing it, you know. But if there is water around, you can pre-filter that. You can filter that water. You can boil it up, you know. And then you can wash yourself with it every couple of days or whenever you get a chance to. You know, it's about taking the chance, uh, whenever you have the opportunity, to to take that opportunity and do um, service your weapon, which is on a, quite often, sometimes a minute-by-minute -minute basis, um, updating your camouflage, making sure your camouflage, your, you know, that all your gear is stowed away correctly. You don't run around with your rucksack flailing around with, with zippers undone or, or pou you know, pouches open, this kind of stuff. You ensure that you're that your weapon functions correctly. You ensure that, uh, that, uh, um, that all your equipment is, is secured, not rattling around that you have enough water on you. You always make sure your, your canteens are filled. Uh, back in 86, when I was in the army, we would have these ice blivets, you know, cause it was mm, about 120 degrees that summer. And we had five, uh, we had the level five category five, uh, heat, uh, category for about a week. So we had to run around with just t-shirts on rolled up pants, you know, and staying in the shade, but we had, we were forced, we forced drank water all day. I mean, and I enjoyed it because I like cold water, uh, really cold water. So we had these ice blivets and we would just basically, you had to walk up, you had to drink your water you had, then you refilled it, you drank it, some drink another uh, canteen full, then you refilled it and stowed it away. And you always had cold, fresh water on you. And I enjoyed that. That was one of my favorite parts of <laughs> that was making sure I had cold water. Even today, I'm very much a cold water drinker, you know, no matter how cold it is outside, I want my water cold. I'm not a water, a warm drink drinker, you know, but um, getting back to the point I'm trying to make here is that they're missing these field field craft skills, I, I would say. The British Army does a little bit of that uh, in their basic training. They get them out in the field. They show them how to put a, a poncho up, you know. Um, they don't sleep in tents. They sleep under a poncho or, or a basha. They, uh, but they, they're given food and they, they given, they're given heat tabs and, and, you know, they boil in the bag stuff, you know. And, and, but uh, um, I know in the Swiss Army, they go through a week of survival week where, where they're, um, you know, they have to cook their own food on their own stoves out in the field, you know, running around and navigating this kind of stuff. All this stuff is, is fun and it's, it's, it's important to do, but it's also a level of, you know, how to, your field craft stuff, your skills, how to survive out there, how to build a fire, how to keep yourself warm, how to keep yourself dry and clean, you know, the importance of being clean because cleaning this meat will, will make sure you stay warm, you know, um, how to keep your gear, uh, in good shape and good condition. Uh, some guys, you know, they, they, they don't wash their, their gear hardly at all. I mean, uh, um, uh, or what they do wash of it, you know, they get back, they throw their poncho liner inside the, inside the wash machine, even if they do that, you know, but it's a matter of all these little skills. And I'm not talking about the combat skills I'm talking about. I'm going to go back to the, the survival skills, you know, uh, how to live in the outdoors. And that's one thing I enjoy about bushcraft is that it's about not how to survive, but it's about how to thrive in the outdoors, you know, um, how to hunt, how to, uh, how to trap, how to set up, um, structures, you know, that you can get under, uh, to sleep under, to stay warm. If you have less little, you know, um, when you see soldiers in a foxhole, uh, full of mud, uh, wrapped up together, that's a, that's a pretty sad situation. Um, it's, it's like there's, there's no effort going into sometimes or they don't have the opportunity to get in there and really uh, make sure they can, they're, they're in a situation where they can stay dry, keep their feet dry, keep their bodies dry as much as possible. Because you stay dry, you'll stay warm. So it's a, it's a, it's all this mixed together. I mean, I, I, I'll be able, I've been to a lot of places from, from some of the coldest places to some of the hottest places, some of the wettest places, some of the driest places. And I've had an opportunity and um, I'm here. So, um, have I had it hard sometimes? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. I mean, when you're in Panama and you're waking up with, with the cutter ants, um, um, using your arm, basically going over your arm, like a high, yeah, part of their highway system, that'll throw you off a little bit, <laughs> but it's better to sleep off the ground. And a lot of soldiers have a tendency to sleep close to the ground, especially the U S military, um, because you're taught to stay, you know, stay close, get in those trenches, get in those fog fighting positions. And there's some situations you, you need to do that. 
But there are also other situations if you're in small teams, you can hide and you can get up off the ground. You can make yourself A-frame structures or you can build yourself some kind of A-frame a structure or some kind of a system, get off the ground, a, a hammock, this kind of stuff. So all this stuff's important. Really good examples is if you look at, the, watch the series, uh, The Pacific. Uh, I hate using movies, but this is actually a very good film, very good series. And you see when they're in, I think, New Calatan. New Caltania, where they're basically living in, in ponchos, uh, excuse me, they're living in, in, in hammocks because the water is, you know, it's a foot of water on the ground. Or in the very early stages when they're in Okinawa and they're basically very sandy soil and they're living inside their fighting positions because they're fighting it out, they're, they're battling it out. Uh, but if you notice that, they're still, um, you know, those early stages, you know, when you're, you, you know, I'm trying to remember how it goes, but uh, and this is going back to just to this combat survival. And that is, you go and you do your 18 inches, and if you're there for, you know, first you go and you get you take a knee. Then if you're there long enough, you lay down. And if you're there long enough to lay down, then you're going to start building, digging that 18 inch fighting position, which is the length of your body 18 inches. And if you're long, there even longer, you start digging into a um, a two man fighting position. Uh, where your platoon sergeant comes along, your squadron comes along, your teamer comes along and, and gives you your your uh, direction of fire and direction of security. And with that, you build overhead cover, which is about 18 inches, using either sandbags, using what's around you, you know. Uh, most guys carried, we, I think we carried like 10 sandbags in our backpacks, uh, in our rucksacks, actually. Backpacks, it's such a fitting word, in our rucksacks. And um, so you always had these there, and you would basically... When you were getting to move out, you emptied those out, rolled them back up, stuck them in the bottom of your rucksack for the next uh, for the next uh, stop, you know. But um, now, how often did we do this? Not as often as you think. <laughs> uh, we usually were quite direct action, moving, patrolling, this kind of stuff. So we weren't really used to doing that. We did defensive training, but this is completely out of, out of what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is basically living off the land and how to do it. And this is something the Army is missing out on big time. Uh, because you have guys, and the proof is guys going to Ukraine, for example, and not knowing how to live off the land. When you hear, um, I, I listened to um, a, um, I think he retired, he got out of the army as a captain, and he was a ranger uh, officer, um, and he, before that he had been in 10th Mountain Division. I think he was a, uh, I think he was a West Point cadet actually uh, before that, but when they, they spent months up in the mountains in, in Afghanistan, and they were basically living from day to day, and they were learning to live off the land because they were patrolling. They were losing a super amount of weight. They were getting used to the, the heavy rucks. Uh, their bodies were getting used to uh, being lean and living off the land. And this is what happens. Okay, you start losing weight, you start, uh, uh, which we all can do, and you start um, start using muscles that you are not used to. It takes a little while to get, get there, but uh, it's what happens, okay? Uh, something I'm finding out right now, I'm walking about eight, well, 11 kilometers a day at my work. Today I did 10.8 kilometers at work today. Um, sometimes I do 14 kilometers. But um, what this has helped me is that a couple of weeks ago, I went hiking up in the mountains here in Switzerland, and I felt it very easy uh, going after three months of hike, of walking that much, that many kilometers a day. So um, it definitely helps you getting out there and doing it. So it's something, and I, I'm not carrying a rucksack on me when I do that every day. So, um, so get out there and do it, you know, put those kilometers in, you know, uh, if you come home at night, if you, especially if you've been sitting on your butt at work, you know, at lunchtime, go for a walk, you know. Um, I have a friend of mine, a good friend of mine named Andrew. He used to live 10 kilometers. Well, he actually didn't live 10 kilometers. He lived a couple of kilometers from his job, but he used to hike 10 kilometers to get there every morning. So you get up early earlier have breakfast and, go, and hike into work and i thought that was fantastic you know he lived up in he lived up in northern scotland near in bonus and andrew you know who i'm talking to you about and uh um you know big thumbs up to my brother andrew he saved me a lot <laughs> anyway so uh, um but uh, um yeah it's a matter of getting out there and just get, get, getting yourself in uh in that working shape you know in that uh in that survival shape you know but uh Getting back to the point of this video, and that is, you know, preparing yourself mentally uh, uh, for living off the land. Learn how to live off the land. Learn how to be able to, no matter what the situation is, to be able to get out there and um, and make do. And, you know, we're not talking about, you know, 
um, you know, uh, we're not talking about anything crazy. We're talking about being able to, you know, like, and it is a, it does sound a bit crazy, but you know, when you go out to the forest, I mean, we tend to overpack our rucksacks. So why don't you underpack your rucksack, carry the 10 essentials plus a few things for comfort level and get out there. Okay. Um, you know, go on. If you go a week out in the in the backwoods, you're not going to carry a week worth of beer, a week worth of cokes, or a week worth of water on your back. You're going to be able. You're going to need to learn how to and know how to and have the uh, the the ability to go out and find water, pre-filter it, boil it up, uh, let it cool down, and drink it, or drink it warm. You know, store and do that with your water. Okay, um, uh, maybe you know, per, you know, instead of eating three big meals a day. You know what you're doing. You're eating a little bit, a lot lighter to 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 conserve. You know, you know, you know um, uh, what you're bringing. You know, and so uh, learn how to prepare uh, meats, this kind of stuff, or dehydrate stuff, and and so you can carry it with you lighter. Okay, and then you get out there. What you can do, uh, you, I remember one time I went over into an area, part of the United States, where tacos are very, <laughs> very prevalent. You know, and um, we ordered some tacos. And um, what we got was basically dried meat that had been um, um, put in water to, to basically to, to, to swell back up again. They were hot. It was and uh, and then we got uh, baked beans, long, you know, big big red beans that had been that had been cooked um, for eight hours, and uh, that was thrown on some some um, you know tortillas, and that's what you ate. You know, perfectly good stuff. It tasted great. I mean, it tasted really good, you know. So, I mean, the point of this video, like I said, getting back to it, is, is, is um, you know, we need to learn. We need to get back those skills again. And the Army needs to go this route also. It needs to uh, put in a real week of, um, a whole week of uh, at least, or several times during out, the, you know, the, the, the 10 weeks of training. The Marines could do this also. The Navy, all the, you know, all of them need to be doing this. Because this builds character, and it also what it does, it builds this knowledge level of how to get out there and how to live off the land. You know, um, now if you go to something like Sear School, the Air Force Sear School, you're going to pick up these skills. You know, um, and but and, and they use a lot of what's around them uh, and what you carry in, like your parachute, this kind of stuff. Uh, let's say you don't have all that stuff. Let's say you're just living, you and your platoon are out there in Ukraine. You're living out there with your with your platoon. You're a thirty to forty guys. Uh, you basically have to sort of live off the land. You're not going to be able to have logistics bring in uh, potable water. It's not always going to bring in a whole lot of food. You're going to, have to learn how to stretch your food, this kind of stuff. Um, you're going to lose weight, but you got to learn how to maybe even, you know, okay, hey, you know, how to, you know, you have a farmer, you buy some chickens from him uh, and uh, how to um, slaughter and prepare those chickens to eat, you know. Um, these are things that you can do, how to fish, you know, how to, uh, you know, uh, what plants you can eat, you know, what animals, how to prepare animals, this kind of stuff. So all these things are are going to fall into this, you know, and, and then how to trap or how to hunt, you know, if you get the opportunity to hunt, why not? You know, I mean, if you're out there and you see uh, some deer around and it's, a, and it's, uh, it's not the heat of the summer, it's more of the uh, winter time, you know, okay, take a, take a buck, you know, and um, uh, take what you need, not what you don't need, but take what you need and, um, and then how to prepare it and how to uh, how to use it properly, um, you know everything from rabbit snares to you know fowl, the b birds, wild birds, this kind of stuff. You know all these things. You can eat pigeons, you can eat blackbirds, you can eat all this kind of stuff. Uh, mice, rats, you can eat all this kind of stuff. You know, so it's a, it's a matter of you know getting your mind around it, learning how to do it, and practice doing it. So, point of the video is, and this is a. Uh, 13 minutes, 20 minutes. I don't know how long is it. I can't have my, I have to put my glasses on and see how long this video is. 23 minutes of talking about blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway, the video, I'm going to uh, touch on this a little bit more, but it's it's something we're missing. That's that's field craft. So, uh, um, you know, um, my advice to you is start, um, start learning field craft and practicing field craft. Uh, because that's what's going to get you through um, either a bug in, bug out, bug back, or or just basically uh, in a situation where you need to um, to live off the land, okay, and how to do it easily. One thing he said is that he had a guy that uh, claimed to be something and showed up with he was boiling up water, 
uh, and uh, for those guys to have some hot drinks, you know, and, and the guy shows back up with a bunch of, he's asking everybody, hey, go out and get some twigs, that kind of stuff, some dried stuff. This guy comes back with a bunch of green twigs, you know, so it's obvious this guy is missing something in his knowledge level, okay? Because um, that's not what's going to burn the best. You know, you need to have dry twigs and you need to know how to build a fire and this kind of stuff. So these are some of the things. Also, if you know these skills, teach them to your compatriots, your brothers, your 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 uh, Fredam, your brothers in arm, you know, uh, teach to your soldiers. You know, if you're an NCO in the army, um, you need to know these skills and you need to be teaching them and disseminate them out to everybody around you, all your team members and anybody who will sit back and learn after that. Uh, make it a priority and your whole chain of command should make this kind of stuff priority. How to live off the land. You should be, they should be scheduling exercises where you don't necessarily bring your weapons out with you. What you bring out with you is your rucksack and you, you, you know, you're given chickens and you're get you're, you're, you know, you're taught how to build fires. You're taught you know, all, all these skills that you really need to be able to prolong your uh, activities uh, in the field. That's all I got to say. Thank you for coming and watching this video. And I ask you to please like, share with your friends and enemies. Um, leave a comment down below. And uh, what's that last one? Subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for coming and watching this video. And I ask, ask you to please uh, uh, hang in there. Um, I'll make some more videos <laughs> in, in the near future. Um, and um, tell me what you want to hear. What kind of videos you'd like to see. I'd be more than happy to, to oblige you. Take care of yourselves. You have yourselves a good evening. And um, talk to you very soon. Goodbye. Huh? Yep, here we are at the end of the video, and this little button's not working again, so talk to you later.